Other than the gold coating, the one big exterior feature with the Ferdinand GT3 is its supersized rear spoiler. spoiler off. It says that I'm a luxury and I'm gold, but I'm so simple and everyone can use it. He looks like a Ferrari. If he's not a Ferrari, he's a very good car. A gold-coated Porsche cruising through the city of Linz in Austria, alongside a red Ferrari that looks very much like the 700-horsepower flagship Enzo model. But when it comes to the jump at the lights, they're a pair of non-starters. In fact, they're an art project celebrating the art of slowness. And they're the brainchild of Hannes Langera. His 200 kilo contraptions are driven solely on pedal power. Slowness is definitely a bigger luxury than being fast. Life in the fast lane can be a short one. And of course, there's also the issue of relaxation. If you're doing two or three hundred on the highway, that inevitably means stress. While at a speed of three to five kilometers an hour, you actually notice the things going on around you. Hannes Langeda versus Robert Falla, a duel that pits artist against philosopher in a race where the snail takes the checkered flag. The two men have been a source of mutual inspiration for decades. Their artistic projects repeatedly focus on the subject of mobility and it being a crossroads between tradition and innovation. The Künstler verschafft the artist introduces lightness to restore glamour to specific things. So in reinventing big fat sports cars as bicycles, the artist restores things to the former glory they might have lost through no fault of their own. The car has lost a bit of its old charm in the wake of ecological issues. Hannes Langeder has named his creation Faradi, a marriage of Ferrari and the German word for bicycle, Fahrrad. Needless to say, it's carbon neutral and guaranteed zero emissions. This is our fuel for the next 200 kilometers. The human driver is the only engine with a lifetime guarantee. And wherever they show up, the mock cars are guaranteed to turn heads and provoke debate. Is Ferdinand, named after the founder of the Porsche company, street legal in pedestrian zones too? Sure, it's basically a bicycle, even if it runs on four wheels. Yes, because it's a one-off. It says that I'm a luxury and I'm gold, but I'm so simple and everyone can use it. It's a counterstatement to the decadence of super rich people and buying the real thing in times like this. If we don't exercise ecological common sense and modesty, then we're going to cause a lot of damage. For the philosopher, the Ferrari is a reference to the 1960s, the heyday for cars as designer items and cult objects. In the first three decades after the Second World War, the introduction of the welfare state in Europe gave people the promise of a brighter future. Or if not for them, then for their children. And as people looked to the future, they were more fearless and willing to take on risks. That's changed completely because I think people have lost that confidence in the future. That's why they've become fearful and anxious. If anything, they'd prefer to see us taking a step back rather than racing ahead. Ferdinand 
fearless and helmetless at the handlebars of cars that would normally be considered status symbols and the epitome of a luxurious lifestyle. The artist's achievement here is creating works that also remind us that we can derive pleasure from this kind of thing. Langeder thinks, hey, I'm an artist, and now I also want to have something grandiose, something valuable, significant and beautiful. So he makes his own Porsche, and he even manages to integrate himself into this reality that he's depicting. His Porsche is already worth more than the genuine one that he's replicated here. Hannes Langeder's vehicles have graced galleries and museums all around Europe. And to turn his works into true performance art, he sometimes dresses up as Burt Reynolds' character from the movie The Cannonball Run. It's not just about the object itself, but also its reception in the media and among the public. Another important element is the associations. So adding a personal performance is just as crucial as the promotion and online presence. All of it is as important as the car itself. Other than the gold coating, the one big exterior feature with the Ferdinand GT3 is its supersized rear spoiler. At speeds in excess of 5 kilometers an hour, the spoiler exerts considerable downforce on the rear axle, giving me a lot of stability at higher speeds. The huge air intakes in the front spoiler prevent excessive sweating on the part of the driver and front passenger. The artist has also made videos parodying car tests, as well as the classic promotional ads. In the process, earning millions of views on YouTube. His works have become so popular that in 2013, his Ferrari was invited to share the stage with real luxury cars at the high-profile International Motor Show in Frankfurt. Not bad for a vehicle whose chassis comprises cardboard cutouts. And the body? A composite of plastic tubing and cable ducts connected with packing tape. The result has won perhaps the ultimate praise. This is something that I, I, I haven't seen yet, but could be not so far for a future car. Uh, it looks like a Ferrari. If he's not a Ferrari, he's a very good copy. With Ferrari, it's about a philosophy not just going fast. Ferraris are works of art. Is driving a Ferrari an unbridled joy? Our capacity for enjoyment should not be elitist and cater solely to gourmets and those who indulge in expensive hobbies. It's important for people to repeatedly ask themselves what it is that makes life worth living. If people stop pursuing that question and are content with merely functioning, then that means becoming extremely compliant, politically speaking. We just accept everything, because all we want to do is obey. What's wrong with a bit of poor man's Porsche? A philosophy that is a common theme in the work of Hannes Langeda. And speaking of philosophy, there's also a deconstructivist element to art as well. In this case, putting the sacred cow that is the car onto two wheels. This is the SUV. This is my SUV. You could call it the SUV of bicycles. It's inflatable and gets fatter over time, so you take up more space on the road. That's important. His latest creation is a vehicle that has zero mobility, a statement on the state of the world during the pandemic. 
Johannes Langere himself is certainly getting out and about. And after his gold Porsche caused a commotion on the cult British TV show Top Gear, he's even looking at a small-scale market launch. Since getting into this, I've even had people from the art scene mistakenly thinking I'm some car freak. You wonder who you are now. I guess I'm no longer an artist, and I'm now more of a car designer. Whether artist or automotive architect, Hannes Langeda will keep on commenting on mobility from his own maverick perspective. While teaming up with like minds to create unconventional visions of the vehicles of the future. Perhaps society will change, and people will be able to rediscover their lust for life and the prospect of a more positive future. And then I'm sure they'll also rediscover their love of cars. And should all regular cars run out of energy at some point, Hannes Langeda's creations will still keep on running.